Good afternoon, this is Terry Topcat for Terry Topcat Presents for Clusterview.com. We are in Gimme Love in Camden, mm -hmm. and I'm with the wonderful Jenny, Jenny mm -hmm. Bellstar. Um, just want to say thank you very much for giving your time. I want to of dedicate course. this to the wonderful Doug Wimbush oh. from Living Colour and Chrissy Boy from Madness, who we... My ex, Chrissy Boy, and Dougie, my brother. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and uh, always show me love, both of those gentlemen. And to say thank you also in advance to Mark Anthony for filming and editing for Clusterview. It's fantastic. So uh, you're one of the first artists I saw on Top of the Pops, and I, that's when I started getting into music and... So it's just the uh, seven-piece female bands and sign at the time, but it was actually the clapping song, which right. was a cover. Right. And I obviously a 14, 15 year old, I didn't know it was a cover, and I just thought, what a great song. Right. And then Sign of the Times came out, the video, saw your performance of the Top of the Pops, and I was a big fan. Unfortunately, I never saw you guys live, but you perform live a lot, but so let's... We did, actually. We, 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 were, we were a live band. I mean, all, all of the girls played on um, their instruments, and um, they did that supporting either like madness or the police or you supported the police as we well. did we, wow. we we supported everybody elvis costello you know so so, so we were actually a, a a proper band i mean everybody played their instruments you had bass guitar saxophone this that and the other and um we were a proper band whereas some of the all-girl bands apparently of those times are called all-girl bands and i'm thinking well why is that they don't play an instrument you know so <laughs> hello and um anyway yeah. And how were the guys on tour treat you? Absolutely lovely. That's lovely to well, hear. Well, 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 Chrissy boy. No, no. First of all, we went on the we went on the Clash tour. So and, that was in nineteen. And there was nothing punk about them. Really? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was the punk. It was the days of punk, and it was nothing punk. But they were such gentlemen, and they were so. They were just so much fun. Just so That's much. Great they, to hear. They're lovely, lovely people. Yeah. So talk, let's talk about. When you first started getting into music, a friend of mine, like at this time, I, I used to kind of frequent this place in uh, South Kensington because that's where I was living at the time, and I was living with a guy called Paul Jenkins. Now, he, so 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 what happened was I was I was just hanging out in the pubs with this friend, and she said to me one day, Jen, will you can will you come to the studio with me? So I said, Why? And she said, Well, I'm singing. So I said, oh, I said, I can't, I've got a cold. And she said, like, oh, just come, will you? So I thought, oh, OK, go on then. So I went there reluctantly, and it was in Waterloo. I think the guy's name was Ian. He's a really nice guy. And I'll never, I, I wish I could have remembered his second name just to actually thank him, cause, and, and you'll hear the reason why. So I get there, and I'm just I'm trying to be really concise here, right? So I get to Waterloo, and what, what track are they playing? Ico. Right, so they're playing Ico, and I've never heard of it before. And there were all these girls and everything else. And I was, whilst I was listening to what was going on, because remember, I'm just there as a friend to support the girl. Then she's gone in there, done the backing vocals and everything else. And whilst I'm in the console, the guy says to me, "Can you sing?" I was like, "Oh no, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that." <laughs> and he said, and, and, "And he said, well, why don't you give it a try? You've got a great speaking voice." So I said, "Oh no, I don't, oh, no. Anyway, reluctantly, I went in to do the backing vocals, and I said to him, "I told you." He said, "No." He said, can you do the lead singing? So I said, no, I don't know if I can do that. So um, he said, you've been watching them here and there and everything else. So I said, all right, go on then. Next thing you know, puts it on the cassette. You know, one of those kind of like C90s that you like. <laughs> yeah. Try and sell them on eBay. Yeah, anyway, so, um, yeah. And so, and, 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 and he put it on the cassette and he said, will you come back to do it again? And I was like, okay. How you did know. your friend, was your friend okay with that? Well, I never saw her again after that. I never saw her. I was just like, oh. No, no, I didn't. the thing, it was over my head. Yeah. And it was just so fast. It's something I've never done before. I never even thought about it. And then this guy, and, and I, I kind of felt a bit bad. But what can I do, you know, this guy? Anyway, so, and he was the one that should have felt bad, not me. Sure. So, so um, the next thing you know, I go home. And this is where the fairy story comes in, right? I go home and I say to the boyfriend at the time, You'll never guess what I did today, and I threw him the cassette. And he, and he, and he listened to it, he said, I never knew you could sing. I said, nor did I. I said, nor did I. So then so he, says, he, goes, he, says, um, he's, he, he says, this is brilliant. The following day, I kid you not. This is where th I, I kind of start to question, like, you know, the powers that be, you know, in the universe. His ex-girlfriend calls up, and she was in a band called The Body Snatchers. Sarah Jane Owen, the guitarist, very pretty. And she calls up randomly out of the blue to him. And why should he know? And then she turned around and said, look, it's a bit of a long shot, but I'm looking for um, another lead singer. Rhoda's left. And um, we're looking for somebody with the um, 
dusky skin persuasion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, yeah, you can say that then, but yeah, I don't think you say it now. And he, and, um, and he said, she's sitting right next to me on the thing. See what she looked like. She's got a... Because in them days, I had an afro. Um, afro, fully kind of this, that, and the other. She said, I know we're from Gaz's Rock and Blues. She's got a great image, right? Because this is when I used to dress up. And then the next thing you know, I'm auditioning. And I was so, so... I had so, such so low self-esteem. Really? That I had to um, sing to the wall. I oh. could. I wouldn't sing in front of the band. Ha! <laughs> Not now. <laughs> but now you can't get me off the stage. <laughs> exactly. You have to get one of those flipping like those hooks, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was that's a, a bit, that's that was a And that was Ico. And Ico has followed us ever since throughout our whole career. We've done adverts with it. We've done um, just Rain Man. Film. Rain Man. Yeah. We've done like what was that? Hangover film, we've done Littlewood's catalogue, we've done... It's literally been bloody everywhere. Yeah. Being signed to the legendary Stiff Records, what was that like? What, how, how, how wonderful was that? Because you were the only first female band signed to Stiff Records and they had Madness and had so many amazing artists at that time. Yeah, and, and at that time... I mean, I don't know what it was like, you know, in the 70s for people, but at this time, in the 80s, what happened was the... You had all these little iconic venues, and one of them was Dingwalls, and we were doing our debut there. And, you you and the place, you couldn't get a flipping grain of rice in the room. And all the record companies were there and everything else, and so were Stiff Records. And they, and they were all kind of like ready to throw cash and everything else. And who do we go with? Stiff Records. Why? Because we thought they were credible, more credible, and they weren't giving us, they weren't giving us so much money, but they were giving us the credibility that we, we desired for the band that we were. And all our mates were on the label. Hello. That's exactly. priceless. Because yeah, when, you're, when you're with a corporate record company, you get lost in the dross. And you might not have all the, your stuff played for goodness knows how long. Yet they were really good with merchandise and getting the stuff out. And on top of that, because we knew everybody, it was like a big family. I kid oh, you wonderful. not, but everybody. You know, even um, Desmond Decker was on that label. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so loads of people just... were on that label. Ian Dury, um, you know, uh, would you say Kirsty? God bless her. Kirsty McCall. Yeah, yeah, and lovely Tracy lady. Tracy Ullman as well. Yeah, Tracy Ullman. There were so, there were so, many, so many people on there. And like you say, that's great to have a fat family vibe as well. Yeah, yeah. And you obviously you had creative control. and. Yeah. So moving on, so when you... The, you were together like four or five years as a band, and yeah. then you, you left the band. Mm -hmm. So tell us, everybody, what you did after that. So you, it must have been difficult from being a successful band. Did you have any plans, what you wanted to do? I didn't have a clue. OK. So I took loads of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I hung out with Steve Strange. He was my oh, good, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, Strange, yeah, my, right. my good, good friend. But of course, we went down that kind of spiral of like naughtiness, you know. Um, you do that when you're younger, you know, and you come out the other side. You, and I remember like listening to an interview with David Bowie. Everybody does the same. Not everybody, but a lot of people. Sure. A lot of creatives do that. Creatives. The, right. a, lot, a lot of creatives, and he was one of them. And um, and then he got out the other side. You know, he just came up, he came back to his own self. I did the same. Came back to my own self. And I tell you that it was the best thing I ever did was to take drugs, because I was then able to use the experience in order to be able to help young people. Absolutely. And so that's exactly what I did straight afterwards. So I went through that journey of being a, an addict, came out the other side, someone's got my back, right? And decided, now nah, I'm bored now. I don't want to do this. Drugs don't work anymore. Let me do something else. And then another thing, just like Ico fell on my lap, this other thing fell on my lap when my, my sister-in-law called me up and she said to me, um, Jen, she says, the drugs are. I'm like, what the hell is the drugs are? And she said, um, well, they, they, they need people like you, people that have experienced the stuff, and, um, to go into schools. I thought, ooh, I can do that. Wow, that's amazing. So, so I created these projects, like really lively projects, that, 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 that it's like being a creative again, you see, that, that I knew would really, really touch the hearts of the people and have them listen um, to, you know, whatever it is I was trying to do. And, and, and I made it fun and everything. I wrote it like I'd write a song, you know, you know, the intro, the chorus, the verse, the middle eight, you know, but it was all exciting for them. But it was also what very, very info. That was um, from 11 to 14. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So very impressionable age as well. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need to catch them before that. Absolutely. But the thing is, they're already seeing people like, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're walking over the drug addicts with the bloody needles in their legs. I kid you not. That was what was going on at that time. 80s. Remember that massive things like, you know, heroin. What was it? The heroin thing? 
uh, so they, they, these T-shirts are heroin. You know. Oh yes, and they had that guy from Grange Hill, wasn't it? Yeah, just I can't say remember. no. And just all, say no. All that. That, was yeah. that. That was the campaign. Yeah. yeah, and so and in order to be able to get a campaign of that stature with all the celebrities around at that time, one had to. It, it had to have become a problem or been a problem sure. for many many years prior to that. And so, so those children had seen that already. And then, they, of course, they're watching Grain Chill and everything else, all this kind of yeah. stuff. So everybody already knew about it. We just, I wasn't put pussyfooting around, you know. When, they, when I got called in to do stuff, I remember being in, <laughs> I remember being in was this... Was it you or other, other musicians or creators as well? Yeah, I, no, I just brought a couple of people in that I knew. All of them had, been, had taken drugs. Right. That, that, was, that, that, for me, that was the most important thing. Absolutely. Because it's our shared experiences that are going to kind of, like, resonate with the, with the children because the children cannot stand being told what to do by people that don't know what they're talking about. Very true. I.e. the police. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the way it goes. And, that's the, and it was true, and we were the favourites. They loved us, you know, so. You moved to Miami. So tell us what it was like at that time period living in Miami and how different it was to London and what you got up to in Miami. I got, got up to. Well, the thing is, well, well I, I accidentally came uh, uh, pop. First of all, we had the cassettes from the Bell Stars and I cheekily went out and did some shows using a cassette. I mean, in a massive building, I couldn't be... Now, when I look at it, I think, how did we do that? How did we get away with that? And, 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 and being it was just right unbelievable. Time, yeah. yeah, you know, and just like... And, we, and I went out and did a few shows here and there with my friends, you know. I picked up this guy, the woman that was cutting hair and stuff, and, and then she picked up somebody from the beach, and they, they, we were a trio. And then we went out and we just did all this stuff, and people really liked us. And then the fashion industry got to hear about us of that in Miami, in Miami Beach. Miami Beach, by the way, is a beautiful place, what it was when we were there. And it was all these 1930s buildings, so you had all these wonderful backdrops so you could do stuff. And um, I, I was picked up by someone and they said, oh, Jenny, would you like to do the choreo, you know, can you choreograph? I said, yeah, I can do that. I had not a clue. <laughs> I didn't have a clue. I was like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, of course I can do that. So, so I did. And um, so I raked him some coins on that one. And then a few months went down, a few months went down, you know, down the line. And I was kind of getting a little bit bored with Miami by then because there was a lot of segregation going on. I, I, I'm not really used to that sort of behaviour because I'm come from Camden Town where, like, we don't have that sort of thing going on here. You know, you're black, you're white, you're blue, you're red, you're dead. No one gives a shit. No one cares. So, um, and so I wasn't used to that. I didn't like it. But um, I did hang out with a few people and, 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 and I made a few friends. Then I went to Scratch, right, this nightclub. I know who you're going to mention. And my friend, Steve Holloway, which is like my, was my ex-boyfriend, another ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and it must be the, this, the thing about ex-boyfriends. And, and he's like, Jen, come to the Scratch. So I went and Rusty Egan was there. The wonderful Rusty Egan. <laughs> and, he, and he says to me, uh, Jen, uh, what are you doing here? I was like, I live here. And he said, to, he said, everyone's looking for you. And I said, well, why? What's going on? He said, he says, you've got a hit. I was like, a hit what? He said, he's single. <laughs> I was like, I said, really? I said, well, can you tell me what that hit is? And he said, Ico. And I was like, see what I mean about following it around? Absolutely. I said, Ico. I said, well, there's so many people that have done Ico. You sure it's our version? He said, Jen, everyone's looking for you. Can I take your number and give it to when I get back to London, you know, call him up? Sure enough, good as gold, he did. Someone called me up from some manager. He says, you've got, because he's got managers going, coming out of your ears. So I was like, okay. So I spoke to the first person. And then the next thing you know, he's passed my number on to Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. And then the next thing you know, they're calling me up. And that's a whole story there, but I won't go down that road. It's just too long. But anyway, to cut a long story short, I, the next, two weeks later, I'm out there um, auditioning Janet Jackson's dancers. Wow. For my video. For Ico. For Ico. And then that's the rest of the girls aren't in it. If you notice, I'm the only one in it because I was living there. And the thing about the Americans are they want to do it too sweet, you know. They want to do everything quick. So to have had the Bell Stars, it would have been, it would have been laborious. It would have been like a long thing because they are over there, and we're and I'm over there. And so because I was the lead singer, they thought right, good, do that, and that's what I did. And that's another. Whole... I had a two week holiday, you know, holiday in Hollywood. So tell us about your solo career. So after, so after Ico, when you started uh, collaborating with diff different musicians like Skip McDonald and Doug Wimbush. That was years later, years, okay. yeah. I mean, that's in the years, that's in the 2000s. So um, after Miami, so tell everyone what... 
It wasn't straight after Miami. Okay, no, but no, what you did after Miami, um, I, musically. Musically, God. I was in a few ska bands. Right. Yeah, so there was like, um, there was the one kind of like super group kind of thing. So it was one from, two people from Bad Manners, one person from The Specials, me, Jenny Bellstar, and a few other people. And um, that well, was your great. Mates, basically. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, all yeah. my mates. Yeah. <laughs> Just hung up with my mates, and we, we, and we did rip it up. It was really, really good. Nice brass section and everything else. Got the, people, got the people going. And then I was in another band with um, Tomo. Lee, Lee Thompson from Madness, and that was the Dance Brigade. That's and right. yeah, so that didn't last very long, but um, it was very good and everybody loved us. And we did the 100 Club with that. It was our first gig, it was our only gig. So what was, uh, was you singing and he? Yeah, well me, well, me and Lee and um, Keith used to write the songs. Okay. You know, so, um, but I think there was like, um, it wasn't for me, because I had so many other, other artists that really wanted to work with me, so and and I really wanted to work with them, and also you know I, I was I'm friends with like um, Doug Wimbish and Adrian Sherwood and That's all those right. other people, you know, um, and Adrian had introduced me to Skip, and and I used to go around to Skip's place, because why why do I used to go around to Skip's place? I can't remember now. Maybe he wanted me to do a couple of bits of vo voicing, but he, he his voice is incredible. You didn't need me to voice anything, but sometimes you have to have a, 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 a female vocal yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, um, so I used to go there, hang out, and everything else. And then, and that was in Tottenham at the time. And Adrian was always around there, was my good friend. And so the next thing you know is, um, I said to him, oh, just "Give me a few tunes, Skip." He's, so he knocks on the door, right? Because he's like a flat, flat flatmate, flatmate with somebody, and he says, "A Paget his name," and he said, um, "Paget." Run up, r r rustle up a few songs, right? And this guy was incredible with backing tracks. And he just did the most simple scar things. Well, by the time, and he passed it on to me, I put it on my headphones. By the time I got home, I'd already written, I'd already written um, Peepin' Tom. There's a track called Peepin' Tom. And everybody loves it. And of course, that was, that was the name of the album because we ended up doing an album after that. That was some of the best times I've worked with some, some of the most incredible people, you know, and... Um, one of the boys from the um, dance brigade was uh, Chico. Ch uh, Chico, he, unbelievable player. So unbelievable that when I brought him in, right, Skip seemed to know what he was dealing with. Now, this guy's won awards in Brazil, this, that, and the other. He's absolutely 100% an impresario. He's one of these people that are so annoying that he picks up any instrument and can play it. 100% perfect, wow. 100, he's incredible. And he's my good, good friend. And he was in the dance brigade and um, Skip loved him. And he hadn't even heard him play. And Adrian was, he was standing there, I, I'll never forget this day. And Adrian didn't know what he was dealing with, right? But I did, right? I knew that we've got like the Don Perignon. <laughs> and then, and all of a sudden he's never heard the tracks, right? So um, Skip says, you want to hear the tracks? He says, no, just play it, right? Just play it, so he clicks the it, play it. So, so uh, he, he plays it. And the guy's no perfect throughout the whole song, all the changes, everything, never one take, right? And Adrian just grabbed me by the thing. He says to me, where the fuck did you find him? <laughs> he said, I, no, I said, I need him <laughs> on my track. I need this guy. Where you find him? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I felt very proud, you know. Yeah. Sorry about the swearing, by the way. No, that's okay. So talk <laughs> about... You're so, involved with your your first involved with charity work. So we're in now Food for All, yeah. Give Me Love in Camden. Tell us about your other involvement with charities as well, and especially people yeah. in the homeless. Well, for, it first started off with um, uh, drug awareness. So I had a I had a charity called Esteem S hyphen T W E M. You don't you like that? Yeah, that's so cool. so it's like raising your self esteem and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I had that, and funny enough, Adrian was a silent partner along with um, his missus at the time, and then had a few other friends. And we ended up doing, um, I ended up doing some mentoring, of which there was one particular girl who went on to do some incredible stuff. And she's still doing it today. She's a wonderful lady. But, and I did that for five years. That's all I wanted to do it for. But we went into the schools, we did all the drug awareness, we, and we got the funding, so we were able to do it on a grander scale, rah, 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 and did that. And that was that, done and dusted. And then because I was, oh, and also I became a community champion. Now, when you become a community champion, you're involved in an environment of people that are also doing something nice for the community. 
So, so that's exactly what I did. And I started meeting some people. And who did I meet? Parish Aram. Now, I become a community champion. And the Scarman's Trust, who gave me the two grand to put on a program for the young people, there's only two grand. But um, I did it and everything was good and everything was good with kosher and stuff. Um, she said, Jen, you'd be, she says, you'd be great at finding other people. So I was like, really? I don't know about that. And she said, give it a try. So I thought, oh, I'm up for a challenge. <laughs> so I gave it a try, right? So there I am with like half a million quids worth of like, you know, uh, on paper, you know, uh, money to pass out to people. I'm like, I'm doing it all day long. Yeah, you can have that, you can have that, you can have that. You know, I mean, it was all cred, you know, it was all, it's all legit. But I just thought, I, I have a softer attitude, you know, I'm not kind of like to the pen. I'm like, you know, what you got? Let me help you, give you some ideas. I'm a creative, like I said. Yeah. So and, and so I, I was definitely the right person for that job because, like I said, I, you know, I'm not I'm not a corporate. I'm, I, you know, uh, I have compassion and I understand if you have the energy and the enthusiasm to be able to go and do something for your community. I've got your back. How long have you lived in this area? All my life. All your life? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. OK, so everyone knows you and everybody. So I can't us. get away from anyone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really boring. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. So yeah. tell us about Food For All and, and, and where we are now. Give me love, right. the concept, what you do, so, and how long you're going to be, well, what, what you're selling, what you're selling, everything. But yeah. tell us about Food <laughs> I'm For I'm selling all. myself, baby. <laughs> yeah, right now, wonderful. No, um, well, first of all, the, the extension of that. So I'm there doing, picking up the awards for the Scarman's Trust and we've become a community champion. And that's when I met Parish Ram. And so when, when I had this, goodness knows how much money, um, he, ca he came knocking on my door. I was like, excuse me. I said, you've been a community champion. He said, yeah. He said, but my other people haven't. And I realized, oh, hold on a minute. You've got, so you had some homeless people going there. You had other people that are struggling to meet, ends meet, but they've all got little ideas, you know? And I said, you know what? Come on, we'll go downstairs to the office. I think I got him 37 grand for his little people and stuff and everything else, or his big people, should I say. And they all, you know, got to do projects, so we became friends. And then we did like crazy things like, you know, going on rickshaws and doing protests about, you know, the government and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's things that you'd get arrested for today, you know. And then um, and we did all that and, you know, like the Monsanto and stuff. And his thing is vegetarianism. They've also got a um, connection with the manor in Watford, which was bought by... George, um, George Harrison, and that's our connection. Also, another connection is we, we have an awful lot of musicians that really have helped us in the past, you know, uh, many of which you know. And, um, and Chrissy Hind is our patron. She's a oh, wonderful I woman. Yeah, I she's that. very kind. Um, she's, of course, she's a stout vegetarian. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think Chrissy's vegan. Yeah, vegan, actually. And yes. one of the things, if you walk into the shop, and hopefully we can have a little film of it in a minute, is what she's very um, um, and quite rightly so interested in people people becoming aware of the ahimsa farm which is like you know when you've got a cow you know you don't put those nasty things on it you just do it by hand gentle yeah. gentle and you know, this is what we're supposed to be doing in life being gentle gentle and um you know and, and and allowing you know having the you know asking permission from this wonderful being if you can you know ha have what they have to offer, you know, and being respectful to the cows. You know, many Hindus are uh, respectful to the cows. Are they Hindus right. or who are? No, Hindus, yeah, yeah, but I know the Harry Krishnas are. Anyway, so, so she she's very very much into the Ahimsa farm, and she promotes it wherever she can. And we're doing that for her in in our own way, you know. Wonderful. So she's I, lovely. I was just, talking about live, I remember I saw you at Portobello live once. Okay, so you didn't uh, have a live band, but no. you were incredible. Was I? I, I told you straight away, oh, and I, I was heart. like, what was that tune that I really what liked? What drugs were you on again? I wasn't on any drugs, no, no, I just, just love, saying. you know me, I love music, and you, I know. you are such an incredible, you are I incredible. I think I've done some of Adrian's songs in that as well. They were really, really good. Yeah, so yeah. any plans to do some live dates or collaborate? You also, also, also talk about your collaboration with the wonderful Elizabeth Westford. Oh, well, that's, she's, she's, my, she's my bestie. Yeah. I love her. Uh, and big she shout wishes, out to Amanda Lloyd as well. Yeah, we yeah, Amanda. Uh, that, well, Amanda, she's like, she's, not, she's like my sister. You know, it's just like having, she, she'll be calling me up, have you tried this yet? 
<laughs> have you done this yet? And you're like, oh, she's like, she's like a kind of school mom sister. Oh. You know, she like tells Lovely you, lady. and she is absolutely wonderful. I don't know if you also know my friend Alison as well. And, and you know, she, she's another one, and, uh, but but then their friend. I met friend, Phoebe the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah, I love yeah, she's lovely. We the, she's she was with uh, Elizabeth and the, was it Rubels? With um, the Rubels. Yeah, with yeah. Tracy Hunter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I did a track with them. Did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. And the... also with the wonderful to big shout out to Taurus Tracker. You did uh, a track my, with them well, as well. No, I'm just about to talk about that. Okay. You did ask me what I was doing, and we are doing <laughs> a film, and it's called Sticking Boy. It, uh, yes, it's, it's, a, it's called Sticking Boy, and it's got Phoebe in it. It's got Jojo from the Teeth in it. That's right. Is it Jojo and the, jo yeah, no, no, jo jo the Teeth? Yeah, Jojo and the Teeth. She's it's fabulous. A musical. She, no, no, she is. No, you, people want to see her. She's just I like saw her for the she's first got time. such a look on her. She's got a vibe. But all the people involved in it are the real characters. So Martin's been very clever in the character picking. I don't think he's ever done that before. You told me the lead was really good, the lead actor. Yeah, well, well this is the first time we've ever done it. I've ever done anything with him because. Um, well, you did a track with Taurus Tracker, didn't you? I've done a few tracks with okay. him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're buddies. A reggae track. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 me and Alison, we, me, Alison, and Martin have been buddies for a while. Yes, mm. that's right. Mm. Big love to them. In fact, I've known Martin for many, many I know, years. Yeah. Uh, it, it, since the um, late eighties. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. He, he's, he's my, he's he's my a good, good friend. Man. Yeah. So tell us about the DJ work and the radio show you do with Elizabeth. Uh, to what, TWR? Yes. Yeah, well, you know, it's part of Acid Jazz. OK. So, um... Bad Barbie. Tell Bad us. Barbie, yeah. Yes. We're just calling ourselves Bad Barbie. Well, we met, me and Liz and I met on the, um... Oh, what do you call it? Let's Rock. Love that circuit. You, you want to hear the story? Go on. Right, I'll be yeah. really... Another one, I'll try to be yeah. really concise. Right? I didn't know her. I didn't know her. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't okay. know her, no. I mean, I kind did of... Did you like Westwood's music when she came out, or did you... Were you familiar with it? Well, I was only Sonic familiar with it when I, when I got to the gig, because I was just thinking... Oh, I, no, okay. I did actually hear the song. I, yeah. I, it was a hit, you know, yeah, so... Um, song. But I, I wasn't... I just didn't do that kind of thing in those days. Anyway, so I'm late. No, 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 she's late. Sorry, she's late. Oh, everyone's there. And we're all sitting there, and she comes in like, you know, you know remember Ab Fab, you know, the Patsy yeah. from Ab Fab, all windswept, you know, oh, I'm sorry I'm late, I'm sorry I'm late. And uh, we're just looking, right? And she's like, um, um, oh, James, James says to say hello. And I was like, she's looking at me, I said, who's James? And she says to me, she, <laughs> you really love this, she says to me, um, your ex-boyfriend and my soon-to-be ex-husband. And I thought, you're going to be friends with me. I'm going to be friends with you for the rest of your life. I said, because no one makes an entrance like that. Nobody. <laughs> right. And we've been the besties ever since. We had like, little arguments here and there, but sure. I love her. I love her. She's, she's so good with networking. She's amazing. And tell us about your show, what you play and where people can well, hear people, you. The reason why people like us is because we don't give a shit. Because exactly. So we do what we want. We, we play yeah. what we want. We're not right. one-trick one pony. Um, she's very informative, whereas I'm not. Right, and, well, and, and, and she'll team. say to me, no, no, that's what people say. You know, they think they were, we're hilarious, but she's, um, she's got a great sense of humour. Um, she is always on it, and I'm not. <laughs> it's just like, when it comes to the music stuff, I'm like, well, who's that then? She's like, what, you don't know that? The people with the big rock trousers, you don't know who they are? Like, no, I don't actually love, you know. So I'm not in that thing, but she, we had, we, we had um, Susie Quattro one. Wow. Oh, yes. You've got to hear that one. I've that was absolutely... That one. What a legend she that, is. She's a legend. We absolutely, love her. Yeah. I love her. I know her sister, Nancy. We, you know, her and I, we do all the conspiracy theory what stuff. What did you say <laughs> Let's Rock? Were you doing your own stuff, to Scar stuff, or Bell No, 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 stuff? no. When you do a Let's Rock, it's got to be stuff that people know. So you were doing the Bell yeah, Star yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. That must have been fun. That's good. Cause, uh, no, I didn't just do the Bell Star stuff. Okay. I did um, um, Sweet Dreams. Sweet dreams Did you? are made okay. for Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I, w I wouldn't want to piss the Bell Stars off too much. <laughs> <laughs> they're my buddies, really. But they're great, the Let's Rock. I've, see, I've seen two of my... The first two people I ever saw in concert was uh, Tom Bailey from the Thompson Twins mm -hmm. on the same bill as Jodie Watley. And I think <laughs> Let's Rock is amazing. Uh, it's great. If, you, if you're back in the day, uh, like me, of a certain age, and you know, all these 80s musicians, and then they go in and do three or four songs with a live band, right. sometimes on the backing tape, right. and then there's about eight or nine artists performing. It's right, a great right. day for everybody. For yeah, all yeah. Different yeah, yeah. ages and generations. Yeah, so I mean, big up to Let's Rock. And the guy Dave is a brilliant um, MC as well. I can't remember the, the one who introduces it. Uh, what, Let's Rock? Yeah. Oh, it's Pat, isn't it? Oh, it's Pat. Yeah, Pat, it's Pat. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah, the yeah. other guy who does it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But there's a singer guy, I can't remember his name. Um, oh, God. I can't remember his name, but he's, uh, he's very good at it as well. Yeah. So, Jenny, I just want to say thank you so much. 
tell us everywhere where we can find you on social media or all the charity work that you're involved in. What's your future plans for music? What's a, <sighs> Or do you have any plans? Do, well, not at the moment. This is okay. taking up all my time, no, you know. This is, great this is like, you know. Doing. And also, like, you know, I'm, when you get to my age, and that's like old. And so when you get to my age, you, you, you want to do other things as well. Even though I of do the course. music, I, everybody asks me to write songs with them. But for me, it's just like, boom, I've done it. I've, you know, I've done all that. And um, once in a while, I'll go and write a few songs with a few people. But I just don't have the time anymore. And th like I said, I'm doing a musical with my, my good mates, um, yeah, Martin Stick and Anderson and Stick and Boy. That's a laugh, you know. That's a challenge in itself because I'm not an actress. I can't wait for that to come out. No, no, I can't wait for it to be finished. <laughs> so I don't have to embarrass myself. You can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait for it to be finished. <laughs> but it's just such a laugh because it's like... It's and like, great people involved, like you No, say. it's great people involved. Yeah. And it's just like, and anyone can do anything, you know. I think sure. Mick Jones was involved in it before. He was. I'm not yeah. sure if he still is. But yeah, well, he, well, yeah but he, he will be. When he sees everything else that he's doing, I mean, we've just got the, like, some of the rushes of some of the small bits and pieces that we've done, and there's such a laugh, you know. And, it, you know, it gives me a chance to kind of dress up, you know. Afro, you know, all that kind of an Afro, the, the 1970s stuff, and looking the part like art. I love all that. Yeah, why not? It's a load of, do you know what it is? It's like being a kid again. Great. You know, and so, you know, when you get to my age, you start going, to, you start reverting back to your childhood. Sure. You know, so it's just, I'm just going to muck about with my mates and have a bit of a laugh, you know. And no one's done a punk musical yet, so it's no. going to be great. No, no, they great. haven't. No. And Jojo, and everybody, jo check out Jojo and the Teeth. I went and saw them live and yeah. I interviewed her on the radio. Yeah. What a performer. She's yeah. amazing. She's so. fantastic. Yeah. And like I'm sure, like you say, Martin's, Martin's chosen the right people. For She's that. got a very striking look. She really does. She does, he really does, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jenny, my darling, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Terry Topcat for Terry Topcat Presents for ClusterView.com with the wonderful Jenny Bellstar. Thank you for your time. And You're most welcome. I love you Wherever so much. I'm Thank looking. you.